So for frappy number five, we're looking at a pot of coffee, which I went ahead and drew this picture before I read that it was a pot of coffee, so I apologize for my non-realistic green-blue coffee color. But in this uh, beginning of the problem, first, don't be alarmed because that paragraph is so long. A lot of the paragraph is explaining the picture that they gave you, and that happens a lot where they'll have a lot of explanation, but it's just explaining a graph or a chart. We do want to go ahead and read it, but just don't be intimidated by it. So they give us um, the dimensions, really just the radius of this cylinder. And then they also tell us that the volume is changing at a rate of this negative 5 pi radical h inches cubed per second, which we should be thinking right away that this is representing dv dt, the rate and the change of the volume. They also tell us the volume of a cylinder, just the formula for the volume of a cylinder, which could be helpful, so not something we would have to memorize there. Okay, so for part A, they're wanting us to actually just verify something. So we want to show a lot of work on this, make sure that it's clear that we know what we're talking about. We're just showing that dh dt is equal to negative radical h over 5. So before we jump into taking the derivative, because we will need to do that, I want you to notice that in this situation, as the height of the coffee rises and falls, the radius does not change. It's going to be 5 inches no matter what. So this isn't like a cone full of coffee, it's a cylinder. So there, there is a difference here. That radius does not have a dr dt because it doesn't change. So before I take the derivative, I'm going to say, okay, if that radius doesn't ever change, that means that I can go ahead and put it into the volume because it's not going to have a dr dt. So now I have that the volume is 25 pi h. And that's going to make it a lot easier now that when I find the derivative, I've got my dv dt is equal to 25 pi dh dt. Remember here that my derivative is just going to be the coefficient, just like if I had 3x, it would be 3, but then I want to take the derivative of the h, which is that dh dt. Okay, so now they had told me what dv dt is, so I'm going to replace my dv dt with this negative 5 pi radical h, and then my goal was to solve for dh dt, so I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 25 pi, And then when I simplify, my pi's are going to cancel, and then my 5 over 25 ends up being a 1 over 5, and it was all negative. So there's my, my verifying. Definitely make sure that you have as many steps as possible. We want to make sure that we are showing we know what we're talking about. For part B, we're asked to solve the differential equation that we came up with in part A. And then it give us, gives us the specific solution that at time t equals 0, h is 17, so that once we integrate, we can solve for that specific value of c. So when we go to start solving this differential equation, our first step is to get all of the variables with an h on one side, everything with t on the other, or constants we'll keep with t as well. So that means I need to divide both sides by this radical h. So I've got a 1 over radical h on the left. I'm going to move my dt to the other side. So this is that separation of variables. And now I can go ahead and integrate. Once you've got that separation, we can integrate. On the left side, I'm just using the power rule. So since this is h to the negative 1 half, it's going to end up being an h to the positive 1 half over 1 half. On the right side, since we're integrating with respect to t, I'll end up with a negative 1 fifth t plus c. Okay, so if I want to clean this up a little bit, I just went ahead and multiplied by the reciprocal and then wrote h to the 1 half as radical h. But then from here, you can go ahead and solve, but since this is really easy to deal with right now, I went ahead and plugged in my specific value, so plugging in 0 for t and 17 for h. Because then at this point, since I know this negative one half times zero is just zero, I can really easily see that my C value has to be a two radical 17. So it's a little bit easier to solve for C from there than if I went ahead and solved for H first. So just kind of being a little savvy about that. Once I know what C is, I just put it back into the equation that I had up here. And then I do want to go ahead and solve for H as my last hurrah. So dividing both sides by 2, I'll have this negative 1 tenth t 
plus radical 17, so that goes away. And then to get rid of the radical, squaring everything, so the other side ends up being squared. So there is my solved differential equation for H. Part C wants to know when is the coffee pot empty? So this piggybacks off of the last one as well. If the coffee pot is empty, that means that the height is zero. So I'm really just being asked to set my height equal to zero and solve. So I'm taking the square root of both sides. I'm at, uh, subtracting radical 17 from both sides and then multiplying both sides by a negative 10. And I get that that happens when t equals 10 radical 17 seconds. Um, and again, I don't feel like you need to simplify anything like this. Leave it, leave it as is.